Hi, I'm Otto Hensler, and uh, we're in the Mysterious Bookshop in New York City, in Tribeca. And uh, this is our weekly show about uh, mysteries and collecting first editions and rare books in the mystery field. Today, the author that we're going to talk about is my old friend Tony Hillerman. Tony Hillerman was a major, major figure in American crime fiction and literature in general. Uh, for bringing to a wide audience uh, a couple of Navajo policemen. Uh, he also wrote about uh, uh, Hopi Indians and, and some other Indians, but the Navajo uh, setting for these books, the reservation uh, on, in which these books were mostly set, uh, really introduced a whole culture uh, of the southwestern United States to a, a wide audience, both in America and about eight other countries. Um, Tony was a uh, World War II veteran, uh, had mul multiple uh, medals uh, for his action, uh, including a Purple Heart. And uh, when he came back from World War II, he worked as a journalist for many years, and uh, for more than 20 years and then also taught journalism for more than 20 years. Uh, but during that time, he also started writing fiction and uh, launched with The Blessing Way. His editor for this book, the person who discovered him, was, I think, the greatest mystery editor who ever lived, Joan Kahn, uh, who was at Harper at that time, essentially the mystery editor at Harper. And Harper, mostly, here's the title page, and mostly made it fairly easy uh, for in the very early books, the 20s, 30s, etc. they would print first edition in the book so you could tell. As the uh, imprint evolved and time went by, they would still show first edition, but, and this is very tricky, and Harper only did this for a very short time, there's the title page. You can look at it and see first edition, and you think you've got a first edition. However, this, and they were the only company that actually did this, and they only did it for about four or five years. You have to go to the very last page and see the number sequence that goes all the way down to one if it's a first printing. There are books, there are quite a few books by Hillerman and other writers uh, that say first edition on the copyright page, but when you go to that last page, it may begin with the number two or three, meaning that it's a reprint. <clears throat> this was uh, this was his first book and introduced Joe Leaphorn, member of the uh, the Navajo Police. Uh, then he dropped that and uh, wrote The Fly on the Wall, which uh, was had a journalism background. Uh, because that's what Tony was doing in those days, and uh, he used that background for this book and was nominated for an Edgar. Here, once again, you see the title page. It says first edition, but again, you have to go to the very last page after the text ends, or at the very, well, anyway, the last page, and there's that number sequence again that goes down to number one, showing that this is, in fact, a first edition. These are very collectible books, and they're quite scarce. Uh, Tony didn't really become a bestseller uh, until about the sixth or seventh book. So these very early books had fairly small print runs, uh, and, but they were very popular with libraries um, because, again, because of the cultural background, which was so interesting to so many people. So they went into libraries, and libraries, of course, destroy books. And uh, that's why to find nice condition books in beautiful dust jackets like these, uh, is they're very scarce and they're not inexpensive. Uh, they're many hundreds of dollars. Uh, here's his third book. Uh, now he's gone back to Joe Leaphorn and uh, the Navajo Reservation. Uh, and this book was uh, nominated for an Edgar and one uh, for as uh, the best mystery of the year. And here's an inscribed copy. There's Tony's nice handwriting. 
And once, one more time, I'll show you the same thing, if I may. Show you the copyright page. You can see where it says first edition. And once again, we have to go to the back, to that last page, to see the number sequence that goes down to the number one to show you that it is, in fact, a first printing. Just as, a, uh, as an aside, I just use the term first printing. If it had the number two, it would still be the first edition, but it would be the second printing. When booksellers, me and most other booksellers, say first edition, we mean first edition, first printing. Uh, it sounds like it's redundant, but it's not. An edition are all the copies of a book printed from one setting of type. And then after that, the British sometimes call it impression, like first impression, second impression. In America, we tend to use first printing, second printing. So if somebody says first edition, second printing, it's a second printing. But if they just say first edition, the, it is implicit that it is in fact the first printing, just, just to use terminology properly. And here's uh, Tony's fourth book. That's, that's the first three books. This is the fourth, The Listening Woman. One more time, first edition, but now they've moved the number line to the copyright page. And the number line again has to go down to one. This is much more standard what almost all other publishers do. But as I said, Harper did it for about four years or so, but, but no more. And then went to the, uh, the, the, the more commonly used practice of putting uh, that number sequence on the copyright page so that there's no mistaking it. Uh, People of Darkness is the book that introduced Jim Chi, who works with uh, uh, Tony, with, uh, with Joe Leaphorn on the Navajo Reservation, as a, also as a policeman in the Navajo Police Department. And there's Tony's very handsome signature on, uh, on the copyright, on the title page. But once again, Harbert has now gone more traditional showing first printing, first edition rather, and then the number sequence going down to show the, the print way, the printing. He then wrote several other books. No, I'm sorry, I take it, yeah. Uh, and then he wrote other books like The Dark Wind and Ghost Way. By this time, Tony is becoming very collected. Uh, and so here's the trade edition from Harper, but Macmillan, Dennis Macmillan, also did a limited edition, a numbered letter, uh, numbered and signed uh, limited edition, which preceded the Harper edition. And these are quite collected, and uh, there's no doubt about uh, all of uh, Dennis McMillan's books were first printings, and there it is on the copyright page showing that it is, in fact, a first printing, first edition. Um, Beautiful covers uh, are, became, I think, people were loving these books because of the American Indian uh, influenced art uh, that were used for the covers. And here's an interesting thing. As he became a bigger and bigger bestseller, uh, the books got bigger, the size got bigger. The books didn't get any longer, but the, the height of the book, the size of the book got bigger to show, yeah, this is a really important writer. And once they got into the large editions like this, they were published in very large quantities, and so they're fairly reasonable. Uh, you can find copies of these at very, very little prices. This one is particularly interesting, however, because there was an American Indian artist who illustrated some of these books by hand. Those are hand-drawn, hand-colored, illustrations and he lived down in the southwest near uh, where Tony lived this uh, Tony lived in Albuquerque New Mexico and uh, there was a bookseller down there who Tony befriended and this bookseller hired this artist to illustrate these these books uh, and enhance them for collectors 
uh, which was which is a very popular thing for quite a while, and you you could pay for the number of illustrations. Uh, he would do one uh, as a, at a standard rate, but then you could have three or four or five illustrations in the book uh, as he illustrated scenes, and they're quite nice. Last thing is just to show Tony when uh, when I did the best American mystery stories of the century. Uh, I wanted a writer uh, as a guest editor who would be tremendously successful and popular with all kinds of readers, hard-boiled, soft-boiled, young, old, California, New York, didn't matter, male, female, it didn't make any difference. Everybody liked Tony Hillerman, and he was kind enough to, uh, to agree to be the guest editor. So, Tony Hillerman. <laughs>